Hello everyone, my name is General Fancy Pants, and welcome back to Secret Files Tunguska. When we last left off, we got Nina through uh, her little section of this game, and we found Manuel Perez, and now we are here with uh, Max Gruber, and he is in Ireland to look for... I can never remember his name. Um... Let's see here. Must be this page. Uh, Ken Morangi, that's right. So, let's see if we can't find him here. And apparently he must be in this pub, or someone in this pub knows where he is. But first, let's kind of check out the scene here. It's definitely kind of a beautiful scene, despite its rain and other uh, lightning and all that. But let's start with, um, let's see, what can we look at? Uh, okay, well, there's stairs going down a path down here. We'll stay up here for now. There's a sign. Oh, he disappeared. A tin advertising sign for an island sightseeing tour by boat. Definitely not by that weather, though. So, I've tried to look into why these characters and some characters don't show up or they disappear or they're invisible and I cannot find any sort of solution for it so I apologize for that piece of it. Can we take the site? Alright. We officially have a sign. Am I... Okay, there we go. Well, wow, that's a big uh, area to <laughs> disappear in. Um, how about the traffic sign? The top one is a sign denoting a speed limit of 30. The lower one warns of road damage. Can we take that? That is solidly anchored into the ground. Okay, didn't think so. How about the motorbike? The motorcycle I rented at the airport. Alright. Um, well, there's a flag here. No idea what coat of arms that is. Okay, so now we have a... Let's see if they'll see the same thing. No idea yep. what... Okay, what else do we have? We have a board here. Looks like a menu board. The daily menu is hanging there. There's nothing on it. Either the cook is sick or they're fasting at the moment. <laughs> Either way, we're not getting any food. Anything else here? No. Not really. So let's head into the pub, I think. Oh, a full house? Maybe I should have made a reservation. Yeah, it's definitely pretty empty in here. We have this chimney, or fireplace. Nice and toasty. Um, let's put a hand into it. I could stand in front of it and dry my wet things. On the other hand, I probably have to leave right away anyway, so I might as well not bother. Fair enough. How about this uh, sleeping gentleman here? Looks really plastered. Okay. Hello? Are you alright? He doesn't appear to be overly communicative. Maybe I'll just let him sleep it off for now. Alright. What about the uh, tumbler? A simple tin cup. I think I'll take that with me. It has obviously already fulfilled its function with a nice gentleman here. <laughs> Indeed it has. Okay, so there's a key right here. A key? Can we take that? Can I borrow the key for a second? <coughs> no. Ah, oh, come on, just for five minutes. No! I obviously won't get very far with rhetoric here. I guess my only choice is action. Hmm. What kind of action is he talking about? Alright, let's talk to the, uh, let's see what his intent, his tumbler. Barkeeper's best friend. <clears throat> okay. Let's see if we can take it once he's done taking the swig. I don't want to deprive the barkeeper of his best friend. Alright, let's talk to well let's take a look at the barkeeper first. He seems to be his own best customer. Oh well, he also appears to be his only customer. At least the only one who is still able to stand. Okay, let's talk to him. Hello. Nice weather we're having today, isn't it? What? It's raining cats and dogs. They were supposed to be a joke. Yeah, real funny. 
Well, this should be fun. All right, and his thick Irish accent is coming through. All right, let's ask him about Morangi, see if he knows anything about him. <coughs> I'm looking for a man named Morangi. <coughs> Good for you. What I meant to say was, can you tell me where I can find him? If you mean old Ken Morangi, he lives on this island. Island? How can I get there? Ask Folly. He's probably down by the water fishing. Okay. Let's ask him about uh, his guest over there. Do guests frequently fall asleep in the bar? Sure. But Klaus is particularly difficult. Because once he's asleep, it's hard to wake him up again. Is there a trick to it? Sure, if you stick something to eat in front of his nose. Then he'll wake up? If he likes it, then chances are he will. What is he like? He used to be a sailor. He doesn't eat anything but fish. But actually, I'm always happy when he falls asleep. Because then I don't have to sit with him and listen to the same sailor stories again and again. Okay. Uh, fish? I would like a fish. Me too. Am I correct to assume that you are trying to tell me in your charming way that you don't have any? Yep. <laughs> Alright. I don't know why we need to wake this guy up. He's obviously doesn't seem too important. He's just a extra character in the game. Let's ask him about the pub. Not a lot going on here. Eh, it's okay. Do you always have so few guests? Some of my regulars are dead, and the walk-in customers aren't here yet. Walk-in customers? Truck drivers who are driving their goods to the markets in the neighboring villages. Every once in a while they stop, have three to twelve whiskeys, and then continue their journey. Three to twelve whiskeys? Yeah, that's what I said. And how often do they come by? Every day they bring fruit and vegetables. I really don't understand who needs that stuff when you can have liquid vegetables. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the friendly chat. My pleasure. <clears throat> All right. Doesn't seem to be really anything else in here that we can do unless I hit the search scene and see if we missed anything. Nope. So let's head out. And uh, head down to the... I'm assuming that there's a dock or something down here where the guy is fishing. And let's... Oh, there's a boat right here. Doesn't really look very <coughs> seaworthy. On the other hand, a famous pirate by the name of Pinzel or something like that sailed the entire Caribbean in a boat like this. Hmm. Alright, let's take a look at the sea. Water from above, water from below. They are most definitely not going to die of thirst. Can we swim in it? I mean, I'm already wet, but I'm still not going to jump in there. Alright. Looks like there's a chain right here. We can't interact with it though, so... Uh, the barrel with fish. That must be today's catch. <laughs> hmm. And the bottles? What a nice collection. I hope they aren't all from today. Okay. Maybe we can get a fish. You can't eat that many fish by yourself, can you? Are you worried about my health, <coughs> or do you just want to scrounge up a fish? Well, to tell the truth... Go ahead and take one. I'm sure I'll catch a couple more. Oh, thank you very much. All right, sweet. You officially have a fish. Well, fish fully have a fish. Let's uh, take a look at the fisherman. Actually, he only needs to breathe into the water once. Then all the fish would swim to the surface. Drunk. <laughs> uh, I just noticed that stone there. It's a little bit different color than everything else. That's why I saw it. But let's talk to the fisherman first. Hello there. Why are you fishing in this weather? You don't have the first clue about fishing, do you? No, not really. Why? Because the fish bite the best in weather like this. You can see my bucket. That's my catch in just the last three hours. Even if I was able to catch 30 roast doves and wild pigs with apples in their mouths within three hours, I would never voluntarily sit outside in weather like this. <laughs> Alright. Let's see if he knows what Morangi... I was calling him Morangi, but it's Morangi. I'm looking for a man named Morangi. Can you help me? Sure. Old Ken lives over there, on his island. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. How can I get there? Is there a ferry? Or a bridge? Nah, there aren't any bridges. And no ship is going to go out in this weather. Hmm. Well, maybe I can take the ship out. 
or his boat anyway. Is that your boat over there? Yes. Can I borrow it for a second? Uh, I really don't need it at the moment. But perhaps you could do me a favor in return. Sure. What? My buddy Stefan visited me this morning and now I'm all out of whiskey again. Now I should get some for you? Why don't you just get some from the bar around the corner? Why don't you just swim to the island? Touche. So it's a trade-off. The whiskey for the boat? Yeah, that sounds fair. Alright. So we need to go get him some whiskey. So we can get to the island. Let's ask him about the door. That door in the cliff. Do you know what's behind it? The cellar of old Stevie's pub. Is there any way to get in there? You have any idea how often I've tried that already? The cellar contains at least a year's supply of whiskey. But O'Brien, the old skinflint, keeps it under lock and key. He always says a barkeeper shouldn't give away his goods. We used to barter fish for whiskey. But one time a red herring got accidentally mixed in with the delivery. He's been pissed and ran something about industrial fish ever since. But the damage was minimal. Alrighty. In that case, tight lines. Thanks. Hmm. Alright, so he wants some whiskey to so that he'll give us his boat. And apparently there used to be a sort of a, an agreement between him and the barkeeper, but that obviously went south. So let's go and see if maybe he'll take this fish and give me some whiskey for it. I have a delicious fish here. And I thought that you hadn't bathed in three days. I'm about ready to slap him silly with the fish. <laughs> let's talk to him again, see if we can maybe figure out how we can get some whiskey. Hello. I know that you have a lot to do, but can I bother you again? If you have to, yes. All right. The cellar? How can I get into the cellar? Take the key, unlock the door, and go in. Anyone can do it. Even people like you, if you have the right key. Now, you're a real comedian, aren't you? Yep. Alright. I'm gonna assume that this is the key right here that we need. But first, let's ask him about the whiskey. I need a bottle of whiskey. How much? For you? One thousand. I probably shouldn't ask which currency. I probably won't like the answer. No. Don't you want to do business? Sure. One thousand is good business. It's a little too expensive, don't you think? A special reduced price. Just for my friends. For some incomprehensible reason, my potential towards aggression is skyrocketing. If I don't pull myself together, I might do something I regret. Alright. Thanks for the friendly chat. My pleasure. <laughs> okay, so this guy is not being very helpful at all. And I forgot to get that stone, even though I said I was going to get it after we talked. Talk to the fishermen. So let's take a look at the stone. A stone. Exceptional characteristics? None. Okay. Let's... Nobody will miss it. Take that. Alright, so we need to get that key, and obviously the barkeep is not going to willingly give it up. So, what if we find a distraction? And really the only distraction that's here is that when this uh, guest is up, he will talk to the barkeeper. And it sounds like he would do it a lot. So maybe if we can wake this guy up, he'll talk to the barkeeper, distract him, and then we can nab the key while that's going on. So, we need to wake this guy up, and the only way to wake him up, it sounds like, is to cook a meal for him that he'll find tasty. So, there's this fire right here that we could maybe cook this fish on. And a common thing to do, or not common, but one thing you can do to cook the fish is you can cook it on a stone, a heated stone. So let's see if we can just put this stone in the fireplace. Nope, I guess not. We must be missing something else then. Oh, we can just put it right in the chimney. Okay, I thought maybe we need to 
To simply throw the fish into the fireplace like that neither makes sense, nor would I make the barkeeper very happy. Alright, maybe we have to combine the two? No? Huh. Okay, so we can't throw it directly into the... Ooh, maybe the, the uh, wood of the sign. There we go. Now let's see if I can cook it. I'm gonna use your fireplace to grill the fish. Of course, you could probably do it a lot better than I can, but you probably have more important things to do. Um, yes, of course. Go right ahead. Okay. It's another common thing to do. It's uh, cook fish on wood, even though it's the wood is covered with paint and things. I don't know how that'll be very tasty, but. Oh, I see. It's a metal one. Okay. I thought it was a wood sign for some reason, but apparently it's a metal one. I must. The metal is much too hot. I must have missed that. Um. Description. Let's see if we can take it out with the flag. The flag is made of some sort of plastic, and it's probably gonna burn up really quick. Okay. What about the stone? <laughs> Didn't think so. Let's see. What else? Well, we can't take it out, obviously, with what we have, so we need to find something else. The only other things I could think of is to do something with this traffic sign, because obviously we can interact with it. The barkeeper also said that... Um truckers would stop by and drink a lot of whiskey basically. I wonder if they'd stop if the sign was altered in some way. Especially with the uh, road, uh, dangerous road ahead sign. I wonder if we, have, if we can we cover it up? Okay, so now, now it'll all say just that there's dangerous road ahead, so maybe that will stop them. And they'll think that maybe that the red is a stop stop sign and that because of the, the road, so they'll stop by. So let's see if that let's go inside and see if that will do anything. That doesn't sound like it, but you never know. Nope. <laughs> it was just a thought. But I mean, we can. We obviously did it, so that's obviously something that needs to be done. Let's do a search scene, because maybe I missed something here. No, it doesn't really look like it. Can we use the rock on anything here? There's a padlock on the door. Yep, there is. Are they still biting? If you don't pay attention. Okay. That was an odd way of responding. Hmm. I wonder what this rock is going to be used for. We're good here. We can't go down there. We can't go up here anywhere. So the only thing we're missing is the... Taking the fish out. We can use the cup on the chimney, or the tumbler. Let's do that. I was just trying everything because I don't really know what to be doing right here. I don't have to dry that. Its previous owner has done that very thoroughly already. Okay. Uh. Hmm. 
Let's take the... Okay, so we're able to take it off. Let's take a look at it. The flag is soaking wet. Oh, okay. I see why we did that. It had nothing to do with the people stopping, I don't think. It actually had to do with that because the flag was made out of plastic, it would burn up. But now that it's wet, it won't burn up in the fire. So now we can take the fish out. Okay, that makes sense. So that's why we threw the flag over the sign. And now we have a fish. Let's uh, talk to the barkeeper and see if there's something else that he can give us to make it a little tastier. You don't by any chance have a few kind words on tap that could brighten my day, do you? No, not really. Okay, nothing there. Let's see if we can give the fish to the guest now that it's cooked up. Dinner is served, my lord. Fish? I smell fish. What? Lemon's missing. Barkeep, bring me some lemon. A fish without lemon is like a bottle without whiskey. Barkeep? All right, so we need a lemon now. Let's talk to the barkeep about that. Hello. I know that you have a lot to do, but can if you have to. Yes. All right. Let's ask him about lemon. You probably don't have any lemons, right? My compliments. You learn fast. Well, what else can I do? For Klaus? Yes, he won't eat his fish without lemon. Bring me one, and I may even cut it for you. You're my hero. Okay, so we need a lemon, but... Thanks for the friendly chat. My pleasure. I think I'm going to call it an episode right here, and next time we will find a lemon and hopefully figure out a way to get to that island to see Morangi. So, I will see you guys next time on Secret Files Tunguska. Until then.